Hi, it's Colin from Town Valley Motorhomes and in this handover video I'll be showing you round the Chasson Premium 778. So starting on the driver's side of the vehicle, you've got your two huge vents and your auto light. This indicates here that there is a waste water drain off just behind the back driver's wheel, which there is. So all you need to do is just pull that handle there and it will drain off the waste water. So normally on a site you would drive over a um, gully or a hole in the ground or a designated place and drop that. But that's all, everything you've put down a plug hole. And then you do have your external gas point. So if you're powering a barbecue or a gas powered heater in the awning, this will run off the gas in the gas tank so your gas bottle on board you get a spigot which connects to there you'll need a jubilee clip and some gas hosing to attach to your device this one this customer has opted a gas flow system so you've got a gas filler point here to so take that off go to the lpg filler center get the filler gun and turn and it's a brass connection so like a beaner connection and that'll connect pull the trigger and then press the button on the filler until it stops filling normally these take about between 15 and 20 pound you've got your six kilogram gas bottle there so with it this is gas low so it's slightly bigger and you'd be able to plus and minus obviously plus is on minus is off and then you can see there it's in the green so it's showing full to lock these locks so you make sure the dot on the front of the face is on the dot on the frame you would use your small key push in and turn and that is that locked now on in your garage area so in your garage area you've got your own and rafter bar your own and wind and handle your silver screens which go on the inside of the vehicle so they'll stick to the vehicle it's a windscreen just for added um, insulation hookah bleed tyre go um, so fix and go tyre um, inflation kit and your fire extinguisher which you can put on wherever you want light and your carpets and your mats this is for the sinks so if you um, turn this off the sinks won't drop down so do make sure that's turned on similar to the one in the front for the beds which I'll show you when we're inside and then you do have on the back your reels for to take a bike rack this is where the back panel's been strengthened a high level brake light and reverse camera so now coming down the passenger side of the vehicle you've got another access door to your garage a smaller one just like so and you'll see that you've got some other points in the garage as well to tie down um, heavier loads Your vent for your diesel heater. WC, so this is your toilet. So again, everything goes with a small key. As long as the blade's closed on the inside of the toilet, you'll be able to lift this, slide it out by the lifting the orange handle, which also extends to a uh, wheel so you can wheel the cassette about. Inside your toilet block or behind it, take the cap off, press the button on the bottom, allows air in, stops the glug and, and empty. Once you've emptied, there's normally a tap there, put some water in, give it a rinse, empty again, and then you can then use this. So, a cap full of liquid if you're using the liquid form, the chemical into here, and it's good to go. Or if you're using the tablet form, you put a pint of fresh water in and drop a tablet from inside the toilet. Your external 
shower point which is a cold water feed so that just connects onto that little fit in there and then you can wash the dog off the boots the bikes and so on and then this is called your Technimox locker so you can open and this has got your filler for your fresh water system so you get a hose pipe put your hose pipe in there and fill it until you've got overflows until you're happy you've got enough water on board which you can't see inside the vehicle you know i'd also recommend getting some connections because it's just a brass tap on the site you can take this cover off when the tank's empty to wash the tank out and clean it once a season and then this little um lever here drains the water from a full tank to 20 litres but you've got to put that on put the pump on and open the tap so it leaves 20 litres so it gives you a bit better payload inside the motorhome and it also means the vehicle is lighter so it's better on fuel this side of it is all your electrics so you've got your trips so if you trip the vehicle out try here before you try your site and you've got your 12 volt fuses so it would be a good idea to carry some spares just in case one blows you can put a new one in to drain the tank fully so you've drained it down to 20 litres but you can't get rid of the other 20 litres or you just want to drain it off all together underneath the vehicle there up here is a 15 mil compression fitting if you just pull that off it will drain the tank off completely and then next to it you do have your mains connectivity point so you get your hooker blade lift the Lift the flap, lift the lever on this, and push on. Always hook the needle up first, and then walk to your site. And then on, obviously on the site first, and put the van, press the blue lever down in the left hand corner and pull the hooker blade off. And then on the drivers, on the passenger door, sorry, on the pod leg, you do have your longable fuel cap, and then your add blue. So with it being add blue, it's add blue because it's a Euro 6D compliant engine. It takes add blue. You'll get a little light between the fuel and the temperature gauge when the add blue is needed. It tends to do between 5,000 miles on add blue. It is a 20 litre tank of add blue. So just fill it either by the drum or by paying it for it at the most pumps at most petrol stations. On the passenger slam panel of the door you've got your tyre pressure so the five and a half bar which is 79.5 psi your leisure batteries live under here and underneath the driver's seat you do have a tool kit which includes a jackknife brace and a tow knife engine battery lives underneath the floor on a fate and your bonnet release is just on the side of the dashboard and then underneath the bonnet You've got your various liquids, so you've got your oil filler and oil dipstick, you've got your brake fluid, your coolant, which you take this off to fill, and your power steering fluid, but the main one you're going to need is your screen wash. And then if you ever needed to jump start the vehicle, you'd lift this cover up by putting the key in here, lift, lift it up, and put the positive for giving or receiving a jump start onto that contact there, and then earth off here your pain code on here so if you ever need a touch up that's your pain code and then you've got your tone weight so i mean your weight plate sorry so you've got your gross vehicle weight three and a half ton train weight three and a half ton and axle weights you can tow with these vehicles but at the present it doesn't have a tone weight that's because you have to go through Trigano, which is part of chasson um, and order your tow bar through your dealer and then they will amend your tone weight give you a new one of these so if you stopped um, you can physically see you've got a tone weight and your certificate of conformity and logbook will be changed as well and then you do have a HO number which is your build number just here so this is the build number of the vehicle any warranty claims any parts for the vehicle support that number to us and then we'll be able to give it a shot on them what model it is when it was built and what part was put on your vehicle once inside the vehicle this is your main control panel so you put your first switch on the top is your master switch on and off which is your green switch and then it'll tell you here if you're hooked up so you've got your little hookup bleed so we are on mains 240 volt next week you've got your lights which are all individually switched around the vehicle 
and then you've got your pump so you've got your little tap there so should you have sufficient water in the tank and you want to use the taps toilets shower or exterior shower if it's fitted to your model you can turn this on and this will pressurize the water and then you do have your awning light so this is a light above the door outside and then these buttons correspond with the ones down the side so you've got the one of the trailer which is your leisure battery reading and the leisure battery location is underneath the passenger seat and then you've got the one of the truck so this is your engine battery and then you've got your fresh water reading so there you've got just under a full tank of fresh water this little yellow dot will flash red when it is empty and then when the waste is full this line will go to the bottom one and indicate the waste needs empty which is the pull lever behind the driver's back wheel and then if you just click here you can dim and brighten this control panel for the people that are sleeping in the bed above it might be too bright or for you to physically see it so if you just keep keep pressing it'll brighten itself back up like so and then next to it is your Truma C control panel so on the chassis models your fuel sources are electric and fuel so they do not use gas for the heating or hot water system so to operate the panel so from a blank screen you just press and hold the wheel which will turn it on and off you'll get to this screen here and then you'll press enter you have the van with the thermometer in in the far left hand corner this is the temperature of the vehicle so you can have it all the way to off or all the way to 30 degrees so for this we'll just say 30 degrees once you're happy with that you would just press enter saves the temperature then you've got the thermometer with the water in so this is your water so you can have it on off if there's no water in the tank eco which is equivalent to 50 degrees or hot which is 70 degrees or you can have done boost which will turn the heating off and prioritize the water so for this we'll just say hot which is 70 degrees of heating your water and then moving you've got your gas bottle and electricity signs this is what's source so you've got fuel which is diesel on its own which you'd use if you were while camping and weren't hooked up a mixture of one kilowatt of electric and fuel a mixture of two kilowatts of electric and fuel you'd use this setting in the winter more to get the vehicle or water up to temperature quicker electric on one kilowatt which you'd use depending on what your site output was or electric on two so for this we'll just say mix two because it'll bring everything up to a temp temperature quicker and then you do have your fan in the right hand corner so you can have it on eco which will just save that battery a little bit or you can have it on high if you're hooked up it's up to you it's just a 12 volt fan which assists the the heating around the various parts of the vehicle and then the bottom you can have a timer so you can time it to come on start and finish but you can only do that once the clock on the display panel and then should you get a warning triangle in the middle you'll go to the spanner in the bottom right hand corner go to preset press enter it'll say reset and then it will completely turn this panel off and restart the system so you'd have to set the temperature and um, the water the fuel the fan all again and then to turn off you just press and hold and then this is just to show that your hot water is getting up the temperature there it's lovely and warm So above your fridge area, you do have your TV bracket. So if you wanted to extend the TV bracket on the arm, you just loosen this lever here. And then you'll be able to pull the TV bracket out. And then you're gonna adjust the height depending on how low you want the TV or high, how high you want the TV, depending on if you want to watch it from the bed or the lounge. But always make sure it is securely fastened in when traveling stops to tell you from moving and you do have two 12 volts a tv aerial and a three pin plug 240 socket there and also notice you've got your your meter so it tells you to dual charging solar panels we fit here so one is charging the leisure battery and one is charging the engine battery and there's your regulator there so you can view the levels on the meter 
operate your fed fed slimline tall fridge freezer you turn on here and then if you press you get the display panel on and A stands for automatic energy selection so when A is selected it will automatically pick the best source that you have available so we're hooked up now so it's went to hook up but we've got gas on board so if I was to take the hook about it would go to gas if I was to take turn the engine on it would go over to the battery setting the battery setting is solely for when you are traveling it keeps the temperature of the fridge that it was previously set at so the idea here is you pre-chill the, the fridge either on a site and move site from site or you would hook it up at home about the day before you went away put your shopping in the night before and then if it was on automatic it would automatically switch over if not you can manually switch it over obviously there it's got a battery it's got a battery there and it's failed with the code 6 because the engine is not running or it's on gas like so you've got your temperature here 5 bars being the coldest and then once you have finished using the fridge and freezer for the season or you part in the van up for a couple of months if you just take any remaining shopping items out of there give it a quick wipe out and then the last thing you want to do is shut the door because it forms an airtight seal so you need to just use this blue little lever that stops the door from shutting on itself and air circulates around the fridge so now in the bathroom area where the toilet is so to operate your toilet make sure the pump's on and you can press this blue button here which will flush the toilet like so once you've flushed it you can then open the blade turn to the right use the toilet always flush before because it lubricates the blade and then flush after use and then close the blade which will allow you to get the cassette out the outside of the vehicle empty it and then top it up with chemical you'll also get on the back here a red light when the cassette is full you've got your your small sink there, your hand basin and your toiletry cabinet and above you've got a skylight so you can lock it when you're tra travelling unlock it and then you can open it here like so a ventilation always make sure all your skylights windows are closed and locked when travelling and then you do have a fly screen and a blackout blind you'll also notice you've got a hanging reel here so you can hang your towels there and then opposite the toilet you do have your shower so you've got the same skylight and hanging reel this is more beneficial in the shower because if you've been caught walking in the rain or walking the dog and you've got wet clothes if you just hang them in here and they'll drip dry and you'll also be able to hose any muck off them and then when you do winterize the vehicle it's always beneficial to leave all the taps open so the sink the hand basin um, and the shower and you may want to remove the shower head from the shower hose as because you can see it's got a loop in there you'll want to lie the shower hose in the shower tray and let any water out you've also noticed that you do have a duck board for bearing weight in here but that can be lifted out to clean underneath so in the back of the vehicle this is with the bed up and you've got your his and her sinks there with your lockable drawers so you just push the catch in to lock the drawers and then you can fill it with bits and pieces and then at the back you've got your easy box system so you've got storage compartments wardrobes with hanging rail this side and a wardrobe with hanging rail that side and then if you press the button beside the sink just here all the bed and the sinks drop down so the sinks will drop down to the floor and the island drop down bed will come down from the ceiling and that's as far as it goes down but you do have your nets there which clip onto these little hooks around the bed frame and up onto these should you have children in there 
But with the bed, if you just, you can leave it made up, but just do take your pillars off and then you can send it back up. But this over here, which I'll just show you, is the contact for the lights. So when they depart, the lights go off and when they come together, the switch reconnects the lights and turns the lights on below the bed. If the duvet or anything was to get caught in there, that's when your lights won't work. But you can adjust, also adjust the height of the bed so you can have it so the bed's lower or if you're quite a taller person and you need that extra headroom when in the washroom area, you can push it up but, and then tighten. You've got two gas taps in here. They are for your cooker and your hob. Any problems with gas though, turn up the bottle off just to be safe. These are mainly for when the vehicle is habitation serviced by an NCC approved workshop. They will test the gas in line with the NCC National Caravan Council gas guidelines. So now in the front lounge, so your table there is in the highest position, the dining position. And then what you can do is if you pull the extension out to support and then turn this worktop over, you get an extra space and obviously you can push that into the front of the van when the two seats are swiveled. But if you did want to put it down in the coffee position, table position, what you do is there's a clasp here. If you push down, then push your body weight down on it and it'll click in. And then of course you can move that over ever so slightly so you can still use them seats. And to assemble your lounge, your smart lounge, into two full-size travelling seats, you use this here, if you turn that back, and lift up, you've got your headrest drain here, which just sits in these two holes, which would then go on to here. Like so, and you've got Isofix for children's car seats. You would put your backrest That's your base cushion, so that goes there. And then your back rest would go on the back. And then you've got your seat belt, which you would pull over the top. And you've got your buckle there. And then on the opposite side, you do have the same smart lounge, another fold away seat. But underneath this small compartment here, you've got your charger. And what your charger does is, as soon as you hook the vehicle up to mains electric, it starts charging the battery. There is an on-off switch here at the bottom, which is orange. Leave it on, it does its own thing. You don't need to touch it, and it'll just charge your batteries when hooked up. And then to drop your drop-down bed, so you can drop your double bed above your lounge. which it only comes down so far, so you don't need to drop the table. You put your ladder on here, which is underneath the bed. And again, you've got nets, should you put small children up there, connect to the bed frame and the ceiling there to stop them rolling out. Again, same thing as the back bed, you have the um, adjuster and just make sure that your duvet isn't caught between the connection because that's when your lights won't work. And you've also got this small rocker switch on the side of the kitchen a cupboard there which does the light for the people in the double bunk. And if you do have small children, to stop them playing with the switch, you can isolate the switches, which does the sinks, the, bed, the back bed, and the front bed here. And then you'd have to turn it on for the switches to work. But should you have the beds down and the electric fails, i.e. Um, you get a flat leisure battery, or you've got a power issue, you can take the key out, Take this cover off and supplied with the vehicle in the hand in the pack is a winding handle. You put the winding handle on the top of the motor and you would wind the bed up manually. To turn the seat, locate it on the side of the seat between the walkway from the cab to the motorhome. You'd pull this out and then you'd be able to turn the seat. Should it get stuck, you would just readjust the driving position.